kind of your destiny for a while. How are you feeling? How's the expectations playing out versus the way you thought it would be in your head? Uh, same thing. You know, I just got to go out there and, and make the expectations I've had in my head work in the in the cage. That's that's all that matters. Well, one thing I'm taking out of this pre-fight is that George St. Pierre is extremely high on you. Uh, were you aware that he had that much belief and confidence in you before kind of these pre-fight activities? Um, you know, he saw me. You know, like I think he was in the locker room for the Mark Munoz fight, and uh, he saw me. I, everything I did against Mark Munoz, I did uh, in the locker room, and, and for the first couple times. Uh, in, in the locker room that day. So he was like, holy crap, he's doing exactly what we just saw him doing out there. It's crazy. And uh, so I think he was blown away with that. Then, uh, you know, I didn't really know he had that much confidence in me, but that, that night he was telling me how high he was on me, but up to that point, no. You've chosen to go with uh, your father over Matt Sarah for your corner. I was just curious when into, what went into the decision. Well, it was Matt, Matt got sick. He had uh, you know, a, a rib taken out, had some complications. Uh, with blood clots, and so it wasn't like I it was like, all right, Matt, you're out, Dad, you're in. It was more of Matt couldn't make it. He just had a baby too, so a lot, on, lot going on for him. And uh, so I thought, you know, it'd be a good opportunity for my dad. He's been, he's been obviously like, you know, my biggest fan since I was a little kid. He was the guy taking me to every wrestling tournament, doing everything for me, sitting in the stands, wasting his time. And uh, he's never been in my corner even for wrestling. So this is, he's really excited, and he's a real spiritual guy. So it's good to have um, him, you know, a guy who. who obviously knows me better than anybody and you know pray for me and you know you know someone that you know loves you to go, you know sends you out you said, that so anderson was part, you said that anderson was part of the reason you've been inspired as a fighter and now that you're going to be standing across from them you know we've seen in the past people fought their idol or something and they kind of froze up so how do you prepare yourself for the magnitude of fighting somebody you admire so much but the desire to take him out yeah, I never, I never like idolized him uh, or anything like that. I thought he was good. I liked some of the stuff he did, and you know, I, I admired him, but it wasn't like you know, I wasn't like, oh, I, I want to be like him or anything like that. It was more just, I like watching him fight. I could take some things from him, try it in sparring the next day, and uh, that was really it. But no, I, you know, I can't let that. That would be a, like a slap in the face of my family. I, if that's basically like that would be me beating myself, and I'm not letting that happen. You know, I'm just going out there being confident, and uh, I won't let anything like that. You know, take away from me winning this fight. And how do you feel when people say Chael kind of put out a blueprint on how Anderson can be beat, and you have the skill set of Chael and more? So, I mean, how much does Chael's fights play into your game plan, and what do you think of that? I mean, yeah, it does. yeah you see, he's, he was explosive wrestling, so I, I, there's some things I could, you know, take from that. Uh, but you know, every fight's different. You know, it's not like I'm going to go out there and look exactly like Chael, take him down, and look like you know, I'm not. I don't plan on doing that. I'm not going to try to be someone I'm not. Be myself, and I think what I have is the perfect ingredients to beat him. Side, why do you think fellow fighters like GSP are picking you, calling you the one to, to beat the champ? I don't know. I guess they see something. That they, they think they have to see something, right? I don't know. I think I, I honestly, I think I'm a good athlete, so that's number one. I don't think you know, I think that's pretty big. And then number and then number two, obviously my my wrestling and my jujitsu. Um, he's never faced a guy with that, with that, that those two elements like I have, and then um, with through my confidence, my mentality. I'm not going out there to lose. I'm going out there to win. A lot of talented guys look silly. So how do you stay off his high, highlight reel? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but just doing my game plan. Yeah, you know? just how, looking forward. Yeah. How can you answer the naysayers who say, "Oh, Chris, you've had too long of a layoff, and you're coming off an injury, and you're going in there with the goat"? How do you, you know, what do you say to those people? Just watch on July 6th, man. I, I, I'm excited to show everybody what I can do, man. This is this is the platform I've, I've always wanted. Like I said, like it's just perfect timing for me. Zero excuses for me to lose, and it's an opportunity for me to show the world what I could do, not just win. I want to go out there and look, you know, awesome, you know, and uh, I want people to be have like a wow factor, and that's my goal, you know. And, and doing that, I'm gonna beat them. There's a lot of guys uh, more than I've ever seen coming uh, coming out and supporting you, saying that they believe you're gonna win. I don't think I've ever seen anybody uh, get the kind of predictions or a Silva opponent has that you are. Does that affect you mentally at all going into this, knowing that you have the support of so many different players who are also I mean, no, it's, it's cool. You know, it's, it's one of those things I appreciate anybody who has nice things to say about me, but I can't look into it. Uh, you know, I believe in myself enough, and that's all that really matters. My coaches believe in me, my family believes in me, and uh, I'm going to go out there and do it. You know, that's it. Because you can't try to shield from that kind of like press and things like that? Nah. They know, like, honestly, one of my strongest things is probably my mind, and they all know I'm, I'm good with that. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I don't have the mind where I'm thinking about a million things at once. I'm, I can't multitask. I'm focused on one thing at a time, so I'm not thinking about, you know, all this other stuff that's going on.
couldn't help but notice you look lean this week. Uh, I mean, can you tell us about how your, where your weight cut is and how that compares to, to other camps that you've had? I went absolutely perfect. I feel great. My weight is low. Um, I did the uh, this profile diet where it's basically I step on a scale every morning. It tells me how much I weigh and, and my blood pressure, my heart rate, and then it gets like wi through Wi-Fi goes to like all these nutritionists. Aaron Simpson's one of them. Jamal Hammond, my strength coach. Uh, and based off my weight and my heart rate, blood pressure, they could tell if I'm over training, under training. They could tell me what I could eat that day. So it was really my first like professional camp, you know, and uh, definitely helped a lot. My yeah, my weight is perfect, and we got some cool new things to eat when I'm cutting weight, so it's not as boring. I'm just I'm actually I'm feeling great, and my weight's perfect. So. I can't tell. Secret. I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to write a book or something. You've been working a lot with Donaher for this with the, the jiu-jitsu. Excuse me, couldn't get that out. And uh, you know, typically I've seen you work a lot with Henzo. So I was just curious what went into that decision to bring him into the camp, or has he worked with you all along? To be honest, most of my camps I kind of just um, I would go to Matt Sarah's maybe once a week and then uh, train with their guys. And then a lot of times, most of the time. I just call like the best black belts from around, have them come to Longos, and we just train. You know, and that's honestly how I got good at jiu-jitsu. I just had the best guys around come, because Ray doesn't really care who comes to his gym, even if they don't pay. <laughs> so it's uh, bad for him, good for me, and good for him too. But. He's trained a lot of champions in GSP and Frankie. How does that help you prepare uh, mentally? What'd you say? What was uh, the coach Donner. He trains a lot with the GSP and oh, Frankie. He, a lot. he brings a lot of professionalism to the camp, which I was probably lacking more than anything. I just. I would usually just wake up, pull people, and just work as hard as I can, you know. And uh, but this was like scheduled; everything was scheduled, and you know, it was more professional. And I think he, he does a lot of that for GSP, who's probably known as the most professional guy in the sport. So uh, it definitely helped a lot. As a finisher, what do you think about the idea that fight night bonuses might go away? I don't like that. Don't do that, Dana. Yeah, I, was, I, I read that. I'm like, oh no, no, no. Hope no one gets excited about that.